Today I'll be replacing the rear cam seals on a 2000 Volvo V70 with the 2.4T. This is a little different than the earlier 850s and V70s as this doesn't have a distributor. So that's why I'm making this video versus other ones that cover those earlier engine models. Before we get into it, let's go over what you'll need. Your new cam seals, 15mm wrench, 14mm wrench, ratchet, 14mm socket, 13mm socket, 12mm socket, 10mm socket, 7mm socket, T25. I had this big one and a quarter inch socket laying around and I used that to push the cam seals in. Pick tools, flat and Phillips head screwdrivers, pliers, a screw to take the seals out, and a drill to drill a hole in the seal. This is from the Robert DIY video. And I used an impact driver and just a little bit of oil to coat the cam seals as you slide them in. Start by removing everything that's in the way of accessing the cam seals themselves. If for whatever reason you're only doing the intake cam seal, remove the air box and the charge pipe and you're good to go. But if you're doing both, you've got to remove everything that's blocking your access to the exhaust cam seal. You'll need a 13 and a 15 for the upper horizontal bolt. You can use whatever you want on either side. And then the bolts holding the mount to the engine are 14 mil. When you take the bolts out, you'll notice that the ones towards the middle of the engine are longer and the ones at the end of the engine block are shorter. So obviously the short bolts will go in the long holes, but the long bolts won't go in the short holes. You have to remove three 14 mil bolts to disconnect the engine mount from the block itself, but you can only access the upper two until you remove the two 12 mil bolts for that bracket that holds all the vacuum lines. So I did it a little out of order removing those two 14 mils first, but either way it has to be removed. So two 12 mils, three 14 mils, and then all that stuff's out of your way. That lower portion of the engine mount is actually on a pin, so it doesn't just fall off or lift out. You have to kind of pry it off like you see here with a screwdriver. Now it's time to get the cam position sensor out of your way. There's two 10 mil bolts holding this cover on, and when you remove that cover, I believe what's inside is called a reluctor wheel, though I'm not positive, so don't quote me on it. That wheel has a 10 mil bolt holding that to the cam, and that has to be removed as well. Before I did this job, some people online were saying that, you know, the wheel isn't held on too tight, the bolt isn't really that tight, so you don't have to lock the cams, they won't rotate. Mine was on there pretty tight, so I did lock the cams before I tried this because I didn't want to take any chance, and I'm glad I did. You can do whatever you think is right, but it doesn't hurt to lock the cams just to make sure you're not turning anything that shouldn't be turning, and, it, you know, you can see in the video, it was on there a little tight, but it backed right out, and I was able to remove the wheel. Just a small side note about the wheel, you'll notice once it's out that there's two markings on the side, one marking at the top, and if you look at the cam, there's the corresponding markings on that too. So there's only one way you can install this, so luckily you can't really mess it up putting it back in. You just want to drill a small hole into the dust cap so you can get your pick tool in there and pull it off. I believe this one was removed before and cracked, because as you can see it starts to disintegrate as I pull it off. And then to my surprise, once I got it out of the way, I actually didn't even have a cam seal. The previous owner did a lot of hokey stuff to this car, so I assume that it was them that removed the cam seal, probably related to PCV issues, because once I replaced it, I had PCV issues. So, yeah, hopefully you actually have a cam seal, but I definitely suggest putting a drain pan under your car, because I leaked a ton of oil all over my driveway. <laughs> Just a side note about these dust caps. They are replaceable items, which I didn't realize prior to doing this. I thought that you could just take it off and put it back on, and then I found out you had to drill the hole in the whole thing. So... If you want, buy new ones. If not, just RTV it like I did. So I guess I lucked out because I didn't actually have to put a screw in the cam seal to pull it out. When I drilled the hole, it just came out with the bit. If you're not as lucky, you gotta put a screw in like Robert DIY did, pull it out with a pair of pliers, should be totally fine. But if you're lucky, maybe you end up like me. You wanna make sure you lube the cam seal well because you don't want it to fold over on itself when you're trying to install it. You can see that it's kind of like a U-shape profile, and so the edges can sometimes flip over on themselves, and then you'll just have a leaky cam seal even though you just replaced it. So I made sure that the cam seal was seated by hand, and then I have this little flat pry tool thing, and I kind of made sure that the faces were flat, not folding over on themselves. And then I took that large socket and used that as a way to hammer the cam seal in. You just want to tap it in. It doesn't take much force. You just want that uniform pressure from that socket. The advice I was given prior to doing this is to install it a little past flush. I'm sure everyone has their own method. I'm sure whoever you talk to, it's probably different, but this guy is huge into Volvos, and that was the advice he gave me, so that's how I installed my cam seal. The exhaust cam seal is the same procedure as the intake cam seal, and then once you're done with that, you can reassemble everything. Remember that wheel that you have to put on? There's the locator pins. It should only go on one way and should seat right into those locator markings, and then don't over-tighten it. Again, I made sure my cams were locked, so nothing spun, no chance of that happening, and just snug it up just like it was when you took it off. 
After that, you can install your dust cap, the bracket for the upper mount, all those other brackets, and everything else goes back the way you took it apart. I just want to take the end of this video and talk about my experience with my car and this cam seal job and how it relates to the PCV system. When I bought the car, the first thing I did was the rubber glove test, and it sucked in and it performed perfectly fine. And in my course of tracking down all the oil leaks, replaced the cam seal and didn't check the PCV system after. The only reason the PCV system was seemingly functioning correctly was because it was missing that intake rear cam seal. Once I replaced that rear cam seal, I blew out both front cam seals, the cam seals along the timing side of the engine. At that point, because I was perplexed as to why that had happened, I brought it to a shop, the shop diagnosed it, the PCV system had been kind of hacked together, it was the old one, looked like it had been removed and cleaned out, cleaned out poorly, and yeah. So, had to get that all replaced, along with two new front cam seals. <laughs> so if you're unsure of the age of your PCV system, or if it's been cleaned properly, or anything like that, just make sure it's functioning after you do this job. Don't make the same mistake that I did. I hope you found this video helpful, helps you replace your rear cam seals. Hopefully you don't have the same previous owner as I did and they removed cam seals. If they did, maybe that little bit of insight with the PCV system helps you out too. Thanks for checking out this video, and don't forget to subscribe.